Welcome back. Uh, this is part four of building our own server. Um, now we're going to be looking at the motherboard. Um, we'll unbox it at first, um, as I've unboxed everything else with you so far. This is the Asus Z8NAD6 motherboard. And it was really, this was really the the basis behind my decision to be able to build my own server. Uh, one of the crucial things when you're looking at building your own server um, is trying to get hold of all the appropriate parts. Most servers these days are put into rack systems, which themselves cost an absolute fortune to buy, just the enclosures. Um, and then because you're using those kind of enclosures, you can't use all the usual um, power supplies that go in a, a normal computer case that you can pick up off the uh, off the internet easily enough. Um, the cases themselves also are a different format because they're a different shape motherboard. Uh, so once I stumbled across this ATX motherboard, which would actually allow me to use it for a server, I thought, wow, this, this, could, be the, this could be the way forward for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I was able to get this. Um, clearly, I spent a lot of time reading up on this, making sure that all the parts that I wanted would fit in this. Um, um, but they were. I'm hopeful that they will. It'll all come together as, as as intended. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at this. I haven't actually seen on YouTube um, an unboxing review for this particular motherboard, so I thought it would be useful for us to take some time. Just have a look at what you actually get when it when it arrives in the post. So there it is. The actual motherboard itself has a, a sleeve on the outside, which lists in very big letters all the main features of it. Um, I'll just tell you what it says here. It says it's a dual Intel socket 1366 processor. Um, tells a bit about the processing performance. Tells you about the form factor of the motherboard being ATX form factor. Um, allowing you to use ATX power supplies, which is obviously one I bought. It mentions about the wide range of memory that um, it supports, um, and I and I think I mentioned. You remember I mentioned at the beginning about that was a, a major issue for me whether to go for ECC or non-ECC RAM. Um, it has PCIe slots. Um, you can also attach an audio card to this if you wish, and you can also expand this motherboard. Uh, from not just SATA, but it actually has an expansion facility to go to SAS, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, a SAS solution as well, uh, but that does require an extra, an extra card. So, just looking at uh, the motherboard itself, as I said, that's the sleeve, then you get the actual motherboard box itself, and in here there is the user manual with the appropriate software, drivers, etc. Um, oh, there's also a little sticker here. <clears throat> this is telling me that there's an AMI BIOS AE170367. Possibly that is telling me what the version of BIOS is that's installed on the motherboard. I don't actually know, but possibly that's what it's telling me. One of the things which was important for me to know was that um, the BIOS would work with the CPUs I'm choosing, um, and um, and also the memory, um, etc. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased that it tells me what version of BIOS is on there, because then it tells then I know that I have to update uh, my BIOS uh, before the actual system will um, will, will run. Um, as usual. Case card for lining up your um, your motherboard with the back of the case. There is two, four, six SATA cables, uh, but I've already got some SATA cables that came with the case anyway. So these obviously are, are additions. Whether I'll use them or not, I have no idea at this stage. Then lifting the the top tray out. I've now got access to the motherboard itself. 
Right. Just to make that down neatly on top of this. I'm moving it carefully out of the protective polythene cover. Okay. There we have the motherboard. It's now a question of finding out whether or not this motherboard will fit in the case with the rear access panel allowing me to attach the back plates for the water coolers after I've installed the, uh, the motherboard, whether I have to think about doing them before I install the motherboard. Um, because this is a dual processor motherboard with one processor um, going there and another one there, whether or not there's enough space um, on the back plate, that's this. If I just remove it, you can see what I'm talking about. That's that there. So whether that opening is big enough uh, for putting the the plates for the motherboard. I'm hoping that it will be because it's 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 extremely large. Uh, and if it is, that's going to make an, a big big difference to whether I put the motherboard in before I start installing the coolers, or whether I have to wait until. Um, I've started the studio coolers and then put the motherboard in part way through. So we'll we'll look at that in due course. Right, that concludes um, the opening unboxing of the Asus Z8NA D6 motherboard.